Hi, welcome to Ride Alongside. Today we're reviewing the Specialized Eliminator both in grid casing and in the black diamond casing and comparing those two. Let's take a look. All right, so the Specialized Eliminator. It's a new tire that came on the market at the end of 2018. And I've been riding on this tire for 111 miles uh, using the Eliminator Grid, this one here on the front wheel uh, with Cush Core 29 Plus insert inside this one. And I've had the Black Diamond casing version on the rear without Cush Core. So, what were my reasons for wanting to test out the Eliminator? Well, for one, it looked like a really good 2.6 inch higher volume tire than Specialized has had in the past, aside from a couple of their models. And it had a really good looking aggressive tread pattern, but it looked like it would roll fast and transition well with its V-shaped pattern of one knob, then two knobs slightly spaced out, then two knobs more spaced out, then three knobs uh, spaced out even more. And that is the beginning of the one knob in the middle of those three knobs. And then it's got side lugs as well. So I thought it looked like a good design, looked like some aggressive knobs. So I wanted to give it a try since it's a higher volume tire and I could run it on my Trek stash that can take up to 29 by three inch tires. So how does Specialized market this tire? Well, for one, they say it's perfect for Enduro. Well, I don't know. I'm not really racing Enduro, but I was interested in this tire, mostly from the tread pattern and the aggressive knobs. And they also said that it's aggressive and well-balanced, whatever that might mean. I'm not really sure what a balanced the well-balanced and aggressive tire means. It seems like if it's aggressive, it's slightly off balance maybe, I don't know. But uh, I thought that was interesting. They did say that in their marketing terminology that it's uh, got the bite needed to stay in control with neutral handling for fire roads. So again, Sounds a little bit counterintuitive because it's got bite, but yet it's neutral handling. So anyway, that's their marketing terminology. So it comes in two versions in the 29 by 2.6 size. Those two versions are the grid casing and the black diamond casing. The differences between those, I wasn't really sure about what they were, although it looked like the black diamond casing was maybe heavier, and it is, but the grid casing specialized says is an additional sidewall protection for exceptional durability plus sidewall stiffening for stability so uh it sounded like it was tough but it was also supported uh and then the black diamond casing it says it's balanced between suppleness and extreme pinch flat protection so I wondered, did that pinch flat protection eliminate the uh, sidewall protection or was that in addition to the sidewall protection? So Specialized says that their black diamond casing is supple enough to hold onto the ground and conform to it on the tread area, but that the base of it serves up stability and support for better steering inputs. So I was very curious about that. It, sounded like it was going to be kind of a stiff tire on the sidewalls and really squishy on top and I didn't know how that would translate into riding characteristics. What were my first impressions? So number one, I'll roll in some footage here uh, showing what the grid casing next to the black diamond casing looked like when the tire was opened up and unfolded and not yet on the rim.
The grid casing, as you can see, is a lot more floppy and supple overall. The black diamond tire by itself could almost stand up, which was pretty stiff. Now the tread pattern, when I first saw it, I thought this is a very aggressive tread pattern. The knob size was very good and it had that one, two, two, and then three knobs where the number one started over again kind of progression. It looks like an arrow shape right out to the outer knobs. Which I thought would be really good and predictable for leaning it into a corner from a straightaway and that you would feel it uh, transition real well onto those side knobs. So my setup was about 15 to 20 PSI uh, front and rear, leaning heavier towards the 20 PSI in the rear, closer to 15 in the front. And I used the specialized tuba sealant and I had it on the 46 millimeter inner rim width uh, Duroc 50 rims. And I had a Cush core tire insert on the front wheel. And the reason for me doing that and not putting on the rear wheel was because it sounded like Specialized designed the black diamond casing to eliminate the need for any uh, foam inserts on your rims because it had that stiffer sidewall. It didn't need that support from an insert. Now, it wouldn't prevent the uh, rim strikes through heavy rocks and with low pressure and those types of things. If you guys have had those experiences, you know what I'm talking about. And that's one of my big reasons for wanting to try out the Cush Core system. That review is coming up very soon. I have a lot of good data on that already, um, especially from this front wheel. I know a lot of people are interested in how it performs in the rear wheel, and I've got to do more testing on that still. But on the front wheel, I was very impressed. Now the grid casing version of the Eliminator is very supple and you can feel it moving a lot. With the Cush Core liner, however, you don't get any of that squirm that you would normally feel, especially on a wider tire like a 2.6. 2.6 to 3.0 is what I have a lot of experience with. So I know all too well about that squirm and running low pressures and having to air them up a little bit more so you don't get that squirm. And I didn't experience any of that running at 15 PSI with the Cush Core liner up front. So along with my setup, I need to mention that it was an easy tubeless setup. Very nice. Not the easiest I've ever had, but close to it. I haven't had any air leak out at all, uh, even on my dented aluminum rims that I have. So two thumbs up there, Specialized. You guys did a good job in, in your tubeless technology. Now onto the weights. Uh, so these tires run like $60 is what I'm seeing currently, which is amazing. I love the price of these tires, uh, but we gotta get into the performance a little bit later before we can see if that's a good value. Now, the weight of the 2.6 grid tire, it was advertised as 930 grams on the Specialized website for the 2.6. Now I weighed it in and I'll roll in some footage of it weighing in at 975 grams for the sample that I got. I've also found out from somebody online that they got it to weigh 920 grams. All right, on to actual measured widths of these tires. So on the 46 millimeter internal rim width, we got uh, 2.47 tread width and 2.72 casing width on the grid version of the casing. We'll roll some footage in here of that. All right, so you can see this is the Eliminator grid version, and this is after 111 miles I put on it. This is the front tire. So you can see these 
little micro knobby um, whiskers. There's still a few of them on there, but most of them have worn off. They were on every knob. You can see them just a little bit. On the side knobs, they're, they're definitely there uh, for the most part. Um, there's some that have, uh, that have rubbed off completely. Some there's still two of them. Most of them there's just one, and some there's none at all. So um, it's wearing pretty well for the most part from what I can tell. Uh, let's get the width on this one. And let's see. So there we go, that's the casing width. And it's actually coming out to, um, let's see, two, seven, two. So 272 is what, what the casing width is. The tread width is considerably narrower. Let's see, yep, it's about the same on all these knobs. So that's just under 2.5, so 2.465. Now on the black diamond casing, we got a 2.51 tread width and 2.74 casing width, and I got some footage of that too. All right, so after 111 miles on the rear wheel, again, this is a 46 millimeter internally wide um, Sun Ringlet Duroc 50 rim that it's on, and this one does not have cush core, just sealant inside. The front tire did have cush core, uh, so could be some differences here. But you can see some of the siping is actually starting to wear down now. And I do have this on single speed, so I am burning it out a little bit more when I don't get traction. But for the most part, it's gotten traction all over the place. You can see there's no deformation on any of the backs of the knobs yet from breaking, which is tremendous. I've been using these in some sharp rocks and um, it's holding up pretty well after 100 miles. You can see there's a couple little whiskers on this knob here, but there's none on any of the other knobs really. Uh, there's some, there's a couple down here on this one too. Um, so let's get a width measurement here. So for the casing, let's see. About the same, two, seven, seven, four. So two, about two, seven, four for the uh, casing width. So quite a lot of volume, especially when you put them on such a wide rim. And I wouldn't recommend this wide of a rim, just to be clear, I'd recommend something maybe around 40. Um, 35 or 40 would probably be ideal for a 2.6, in my opinion. Let's just make sure all these are the same. All these ones are a little bit wider on this one for some reason. All right, so two, two point five one. All right, and on a thirty millimeter rim width, which is what probably more of you are going to be going with, not quite as wide as the forty six millimeter internal rim width rims that I'm running. Uh, somebody found that they got. 2.44 for the tread width and 2.49 for the casing width. So you can see that these are more like a 2.5 inch tire rather than a 2.6. So specialized, I love to see an actual width uh, of the tread that matches what it says on your sidewall. For comparison, on a 30 millimeter rim width, people are getting uh, 2.31 for both the tread and the casing width. So that one Specialized has right on, but the 2.6s, uh, we're not seeing the tread width um, on, on a variety of different width, rim widths match what they have uh, printed on the sidewall. All right, so how does this tire ride? Um, so as I alluded to, the 
Um, grid casing is a lot more supple than the black diamond casing. And for those of you who um, are looking for something like that, um, the grid casing is going to be great for you. It's not the fastest rolling, but it's uh, actually a very decent rolling tire compared to some of the tires I've tried in the past. It hooks up well in smooth corners and while braking it does an excellent job uh, on the single speed too. It's hard for me to brake loose that rear wheel even uh, in loose conditions. So it's great for that. Um, the edge knobs however, they um, are kind of a parallelogram shape or rectangular shape knob and they don't have as much of that L shape like we're used to on like Maxxis Minion tires for instance, uh, the DHF, the DHR2, those have more of that L shaped knob and I'm finding that those side knobs really flex a lot more than I would like them to. Alright so Eliminator Tread seems to be very good in both wet and dry conditions. I've mostly had dry conditions but there have been a few times where I've run through some streams and through some mud and had some wet tires. Seems to be working well so far, but I've only had it in uh, in the summer really. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, but the the mud that I have had on there seems to shed pretty well. Um, it rolls better than uh, most aggressive knob tires I've run. The DHR2 seem, from Maxxis seems to roll just a tad bit better, but it doesn't have the traction in the center that the Eliminator has. Uh, the Eliminator is great for the traction in the center. The side knobs, like I said, I wish they had a little bit more of an L shape for some stability there. Uh, so when I'm leaning real hard, I don't feel them squirming at all, but it's really not that noticeable on, I'd say probably 85% of my riding. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so what do I like about this tire? I really like the traction. I get excellent traction and like I said on my single speed I haven't had it break loose very often at all on the rear tire which is tremendous. Even riding through loose stuff it's it's hooking up which is really good. Front tire as well it seems to be hooking up real well through turns and it breaks loose um, pretty um, predictably. So it's a very durable tire from what I've seen so far. I'll let you know down in the comments below if I happen to get any sidewall cuts or anything in the future. And I also like that it's a pretty well rolling tire. For those aggressive knobs on there, it rolls pretty well. It's not the best rolling tire I've used, but it's one with some of the best traction in the center of the tread. And that is something to write home about for sure. So although it doesn't roll as good, I think the rolling uh, resistance isn't as much of a big deal breaker for me uh, because it has such great traction. So if you're somebody that's interested in a little bit better traction for a little hit on the rolling resistance, then this is a pretty good tire for you. This tire is really good in rocky conditions. I will roll in some footage of a sharp edged rock that I ran over and many others I've run over just like this one and I haven't had any issues with either the knobs um, peeling off or having any wear on them really at all or the side um, sidewalls haven't had any uh, issues or damage at all to them either. What don't I like about it? Just those side knobs. I wish they had just a little bit more stability. But aside from that, uh, it's a very, very good tire. So what are my recommendations for those of you who are wondering which casing to get? Well, for the black diamond casing users, you're going to be a person who wants the stability right out of the box. And you don't want a liner like Kush Core to have to rely on to get that stability on your sidewalls and keep that tire um, stiff and stable uh, in the turns and leaning on it and even running lower pressures. You're not going to have um, that squirm like you would with the grid casing. 
Now it is a lot heavier at 200 grams more, but it, that's less than a tire insert. So you gotta weigh your options there, whether or not you would wanna run the grid casing with the tire insert, or you'd wanna run the black diamond casing uh, without, or maybe you'd wanna run the black diamond casing with, in which case you'd have a very stable tire, a very durable tire, and you'd have a lot of extra weight. The grid casing, user is going to be somebody who wants a very supple feel to their tire and isn't as concerned with durability uh, or the sidewall uh, stability. So you may be just a regular trail user that wants uh, a little bit more aggressive tread, a little bit uh, wider tire with some more volume that will give you a little bit more suppleness, but you don't want that with a super durable tire that's going to weigh some more. You may be a user like myself that wants that supple feeling, wants the stability, and wants some durability but not the ultimate durability. In which case I'd say throw a Cushcore liner in there and see how that works for you. Um, they are a $150 kit and they do add 333 grams per wheel is what I'm seeing on my scale. That's a lot of weight. And this isn't a Cushcore review. I still have more testing to do. But what I like so far is that on the front wheel where I have the Cushcore and the grid cased eliminator, it feels like I've got a little bit extra tuning going on on my suspension and I'm not having any of that squirm that I've had in the past running lower pressures on my front wheel through a, a hard turn. So it feels really good to me. I've got lots of traction. I've got lots of stability. So if you're a user like that, man, that uh, grid casing on the Eliminator might be right up your alley. All right, so that's my in-depth review of the specialized Eliminator in the grid and the black diamond case. If you have any questions, please leave them in a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as you leave one. And like always, I'm Nick from Ride Alongside. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll have more content for you real soon. I don't know if you can see these deer behind me. We got a deer right over here, a couple more over here that just came through the frame. I heard something behind me and wondered what it was. <laughs>